Welcome to Cyber Frontier, bringing you the latest news, trends, and hottest topics that focus on advances in cybersecurity and cyber industry economics. Our expert yet down-to-earth hosts make cybersecurity straightforward. They ask the tough questions and make this challenging topic something that everyone can understand. Our candid approach lets guests open up on topics we would all like to see addressed. You can find us on the web at newcyberfrontier.com. That's www.newcyberfrontier.com. Now join today's host as he introduces the topic for today's New Cyber Frontier. Welcome to today's episode of New Cyber Frontier. Today in the studio with me, and I'm glad to have somebody. I've been all day by myself in here because we're in the middle of coronavirus scare. Uh, but Jim Heideman here joining me in the studio today. Uh, Jim, thanks for coming in. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't have my mask. I'm, I'm hoping you disinfected, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Well, brave it. I think I have some hand sanitizer. <laughs> right. We'll just slather up. Yeah, with it. We'll, and spray down with Lysol done. on the way out. Yeah, but there's nobody else in the building either. It's a, it's a school here. Absolutely. And all the students are sent home. Yep. Everything's kind of gone dry. It's just on pause, and we're left to, you know, the good thing about technology is that we enable people, and, uh, you know, that's the fantastic thing is... At least we're not, you know, selling burgers and, and fries at the local diner because all of them are closed. Yeah, and uh, we've had some problems. We'll talk about We had some problems with bandwidth today. Yeah. Everybody jumped online, home working at the same time. Right. And at the peak times for conferences today, the whole, it seems like the whole internet backbone is just slowing down. It's maxed out. And so we are stress testing our communications infrastructure. Absolutely. Probably the first time. And residential is, is more prevalent now than it's ever been. You know, companies are starting to work remotely. And so if their infrastructure isn't built for that, you know, and I would consider some of the SD-WAN, um, the disruptive technologies like SD-WAN that, that we can talk about um, later, but that enables you to have almost 100% uptime. But when you're, you're taxing the Comcast circuit at home, when you have, you know, Billy uh, playing his video games, you know, because he's home from school, that's going to affect your VoIP quality. And that's right when it was, when everybody got home from school. All the Well, I mean, they're out of school, though, too. I think they're just streaming Netflix all day long and playing video games all day huh. long. And so now it's a, it's going to be a problem all day long. Yeah, I saw it picked up a couple times, and they were the key times of the day when everybody came back from lunch. Yeah. And then at, like, 3 o'clock, we had to cancel one of our, our recordings because just the quality was too bad. So yeah. I was glad that you came in. Uh, yeah. It might I guess, have been the same thing. I guess the toilet papers were out at the stores, and so they went back home and decided to just hang out there. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We got the, what we're seeing some stress test. But that's a great topic for today's show. Jim is the founder and CEO of Telexicom, which helps companies buy and cost the right services, right? You go out and look at uh, kind of like I, I view what you do is like the progressive, they advertise, we put everybody's rates in front of you, and we do the best thing for our customer. That's what you do for technology sales. Yeah, it's kind of similar to progressive, except we represent all the providers. So we have an agnostic approach to that. So essentially what Telexicom does is we identify the most pressing and critical technology initiatives that our clients are um, looking or that are on the horizon. And then through our portfolio, we have 110 cloud companies, 1,600 global data centers that we source, uh, 30 cloud security companies, and 90 carriers like the companies you've heard of, CenturyLinks, AT&Ts, and those types. So what we do is we ethically pit those companies against each other for the best solution for our clients. So we can typically bring two to three to four solutions, and one might be more expensive, one might be a better option, one might be cheap, but it's not the best option. And so we source those like an insurance broker, but not only rep representing Progressive and, and vetting the other companies that would compete against us, we vet uh, Progressive in addition to the other companies as well. And you're representing the company saying, you know, we're, you might not need the, want the cheapest storage because you need a quality, so you need a little bit higher price, but it's going to be steady and good for you. And you're yeah. looking at not just cheapest, most expensive, but the gamut of how does it meet what you needs, your needs are. Right. What we find right now is is there's a challenge with IT professionals that they can't possibly know everything that's that's going on out there. Yeah. And so I really believe there's a, a rebellion against the incumbents out there right now with laser focused companies. So we represent a lot of the uh, Gartner Magic Quadrant leaders that you might not have heard of 
but they're laser focused on what they do and they're solving big pro big problems in business because they're focused on that. Many companies that are born in the cloud. So you think about a CenturyLink, for example, they do a thousand different things, but they don't really do one thing well. So they weren't born in the cloud. They just bought a bunch of companies and now they're having one commercial that says CenturyLink, but there are 15 or 20 or 30 different companies underneath that. You know, and I didn't even think of them as cloud. I thought they were a, a um, like a, optical pots line company wire, right yeah pots well, are, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking transport even, the first time i was introduced to them they put fiber optic into my my house up sure. in denver right right and so CenturyLink really started with quest communications quest was a forward thinking long distance phone company and that's how i got into the market um, selling long distance i started with mci friends and family you might have heard of that back in the day i do remember that yeah, yeah absolutely and so um that kind of evolved into other products and services and CenturyLink. um purchased uh, Savas, which you might remember was a data center. Let's hold on. we got to hear from our sponsors and pay the Let's bills. Let's get them. We'll be right back. All right. Cyber Resilience Institute helps build strong cyber communities designed to prevent members from attack. Like building a neighborhood watch, it takes coordination and a sharing community to protect our identities and valuables in the virtual world. Typically, we hear that organizations know they need to do something to protect their cyber assets, but don't know where to begin. Let Cyber Resilience Institute help your community create an action plan. Cyber Resilience Institute will build your community or business marketplace so that it is designed to support a collective cyber defense. Contact them for more information at cyberresilienceinstitute.org. All right, welcome back to New Cyber Frontier. Today, speaking with Jim Heidemann about the economics around pricing and costing is what we decided we're going to talk about today sure, yeah. for different almost commodities now right. in, secu in not security, but the, the digital age. That's right. You know, you're, we're buying data. We have 100 different options out there. Right. How and who do we choose? Right. And it's not always just the cheapest. It's not always just the best service. It might be... They have an office right local here to me, and they'll come sure. over to my office when I need them. Right. And you want that customer interface. Yeah, absolutely. There's all kinds of variances that you can look at to make a decision. And what we do is we extrapolate those out. I spend my days studying the ins and outs of these companies. Um, all of the information we have is is in a portal that, that, we could, that we house, and we keep all the information there so I can keep up on the, the ins and outs of these, uh, these specific companies. And what's really unique is to see the niches they're carving out and the, and the problems and solutions they're they're solving uh, because they're not focused on everything they're focused on cloud storage or they're focused on unified communications or contact center as a service or data transport and I think you know when you talk about some of the economies of scale what we've seen with data transport is an absolute race to zero and you, so you see it's getting cheaper and and the internet is getting faster and that's what so, people, the demand in the market is for the most part anything in the technology era is on the race to zero right I mean yeah. if you can't sell it cheaper next year, your competitors will and you're not around. Exactly. So it's twofold. Let's research the latest thing, come out with something new that we can put a premium price tag on that's unique. Right. And race to zero on everything else. That's competing with someone else that you know you have a leg up on. Uh huh. Absolutely. And that's changing so fast. How does an IT professional keep up with that change when they're resetting How does passwords? A consumer and keep up with that. Consumer Anybody. forget about it. I mean it. you think of it if you're a business you're a consumer of all kinds of technological sure. services, products. The Internet of Things. What, what, do, you do, what do you do with them all? You yeah. Know, how do you keep that straight? Right. Um, and you know, if we looked at it from a company standpoint, and you could probably give us good advice on if I'm coming in from a, a startup to a midsize to a, a bigger, you know, maybe a startup to a small, small. Um, Small Stop business. Stop growing. Yeah. Big, a big small business, you can be up to 500 employees and still be considered a, right. Right, right under 500 employees. So be considered a small business as far as the government is. And then medium size is bigger than that. Right. You know, um, so, and then you get the super behemoths or right. whatever. But there's several tiers of companies. And if you're starting up now, you don't buy anything. You use services. Well, the commodity of memory, data storage... Uh, even infrastructure as a service now is cheaper than you can do it yourself. Yeah. And you think of everything is as a service. Everything's as a service. And what's driving that is is a capital expense versus an operational expense. So you hear that a lot in, in business now. Everything's going to to an operational expense where it's easier to budget. 
uh, think about how fast equipment is is getting outdated. You know, to try to keep up with patches and, and install the latest server and all that, you just can't possibly do that. So mm-hmm. operational expenses is, is really the wave of the future. And, and you can think about anything as as a service these days, right? <laughs> yeah. So as you, though, look at companies and your customers mm-hmm. of different sizes, sure. tell us some key recommendations that you say, hey, when you're doing this, these type of product things you need to think about, and here's you your determining factors. Right. Well, I think you want to position yourself in a, um, a mode of a growth mode. You don't want to start off with a system that you're going to outgrow. I think that's the first thing. When I talk a system, we could use unified communications right now because that's the, the hot buzzword now is VoIP or remote workers. Everybody's trying to find a way to work from home and still Especially keep the productive. Yeah, absolutely. And it might not die anytime soon. No. No pun intended there, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, so it, it's it's a, a hot topic and how companies can scale into that. You have to also consider things like social media, touch points of your clients. So if you... Social media in terms of scaling into more clients. Well, think, it, about. think about this. If you talk about the days of old, I used to sell uh, big Avaya systems to, to call centers. Uh-huh. Well, call centers aren't call centers anymore. They're contact centers because they have Yelp... Uh, tying into them. They've got Facebook, they've got SMS text, they've got uh, emails, voicemails. There's all kinds of touch points that a company could have with their gotcha. clients that so they have to have a platform to manage to that. Absolutely. So the, the websites now that you open them up and a little thing pops Chat up Q. in the corner and says, hey, I'm here. Would you like to talk to me? That's, that's a, right. That's a touch point you're that's talking right. about. That's right. And I've seen companies that deploy that technology, but they aren't tied into it. So I, there, there was a uh, a d- online delivery food that I just checked for, it, it was a prospect, and, and I just for fun put in h- how long will it take to deliver, you know, X. And I waited for an hour and 15 minutes before anyone that said, hi, may I help you? That came up right away. Mm-hmm. But then when I asked a question, it was an hour and a half before I heard anything back from them. And you stayed around and waited for this? Or? Well, because I'm trying to sell them. Yeah, yeah. I gotcha. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to find a prospect here. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, I, I, my, my tolerance was like, all right, 30 seconds. What, I'm, one minute peace, at the most? Peace out. One minute at the most, people are going to wait for that. And so companies have to be dialed into the right technology. You might have a, a great you know, marketing campaign or a good commercial or slogan, but if you can't back it up with excellent customer service and a good customer experience, then it's all for naught. And you know what? As, as a small business myself, those are two separate skill sets. And you, a lot of times, you, it's one person that does it all. You yep. know, this right. person is the engineer and supports <laughs> customers, <laughs> right. right? Yep. Or there's three engineers, and they 10 percent of their time they rotate between supporting customers, right. right? Yep. And they're if they're thinking project I'm working on for days, five customers can come and go and put up a little thing in the corner of their sure. screen, and. They'll be like, oh, four hours later, oh, we had five customers. But they're all gone because 30 gone. seconds they pieced out. Right, they pieced out. And keeping that balance, especially in a small company, yeah, you you got to have somebody help you with that. Yeah. But then that person that's answering a little checkbox that you hire or is over in whatever country. Wherever, yeah. Doesn't know anything about your industry right. or your people. Right. And so they immediately know that, too. Because right. they're, they're asking a question like, oh, well, let me let me help you. Did, you. did your computer on? Right. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, and, and to take that a step further, there's companies now that could get, let's say you're delivering a, a, a washer and dryer to Mrs. Jones. And Mrs. Jones, you know, calls in and places the order on the phone. And then uh, a couple days later, they call her back and she gets a voicemail. And then she gets the voicemail and let's say she's savvy enough to send a text and say, hey, when's that going to be delivered? Um, then that can go to the, the delivery department, the procurement, and then they can send out texts. All these different mediums have to be in sync with one another. And the, and the good thing is with, with the, uh, the advent of the cloud is that the platforms out there are, are phenomenal. And, and, you know, companies like I could say Five Nines, um, Nice In Contact, Sarah Nova, um, 8x8, some of these companies are, are solving big problems just with what we're talking about as contact center as a service. So this is something that as a, I would have never thought about, but yet you help customers think about this. Sure. Hey, you're at this stage, you're going to need customers. How are you going to grow? How are you going to grow? Yep. We got the little pop-up box in the corner. We got the things on social media coming yep. out. We got people doing calls. We, what, voicemails. You're voicemails. getting emails back and forth. Um, you could have reps that are out visiting people. So so how do you keep that in one system? Most most companies right now are bolting on this and that. They'll find, you know, a chat um, notification online and then they'll bolt that onto their system. 
not many people are taking a step back and saying, this is an all-encompassing solution. This is how we're going to solve problems by having everything all under one roof, if you will. And there is companies out there that offer it, or do you look at a palette of different services that come together? No, there's companies that do that day in and day out. Like I said, the companies that we work with, Contact Center as a service is huge right now. And there's a statistic that 82% of companies right now that are considered call centers or contact centers, most of those companies have premise-based phone systems, meaning they have people that work updating things, patching things, Mm -hmm. um, managing things, moves ads or changes in the offices. With these cloud um, contact center companies, it's all for naught. It's all done. It's all taken care of. And we can spin that up in a matter of 45 days. All right. We're going to hear from our sponsors. We're going to come back and talk about that, you know, those things that we get and uh, some of the experiences that I've had and have some some questions about that. All right. Great. Security Services are your cybersecurity experts with decades of experience providing professional training services for our clients in various industries. We offer professional training and certification in areas of cybersecurity, safety, health, and environmental services at our academy. Our in person and online training provides a collaborative environment where students can interact directly with instructors through live chats or in private classrooms. Visit murraysecurityservices.com for more information. So welcome back to New Cyber Frontier. Today we're talking with Jim Heidemann, and we're talking about something that is usually off topic, <laughs> not technical cybersecurity, but yet something that all of us practitioners in cybersecurity don't even think we need, but it's it's part of the business. We Absolutely. might not think about it. Uh, and that's the you know the sales, the growing acquisitions, customer interaction. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, the things <laughs> some of us technical people don't want to right. think about. But um, we were talking before that, that there's, you know, the companies now that are offering these, all these services of touch points. Mm-hmm. And um, it was interesting to me because my mind immediately goes to all the experiences I have when I'm working with somebody from another part of the world and, or somebody, you know, that comes on in a, in a very harsh accent and says their name's Steve. And, you know, right. their name's not Steve. Right. That's just the name that they, the call right. center Yeah, of course it's not them. Steve Smith. Yeah, it, exactly. <laughs> it's a less threatening name. <laughs> anyway, um, but all these things are like, okay, if it's not connected enough to the business, you know, they, they can turn people off. Oh yes, yeah. is my my question. Right. So right. how does how do you judge if you're bringing in somebody doing this service, and that's their only business model to offer this service, they're not going to be good at the the core business, and that would turn people off. I mean, tell me how that balance works. Well, I think I can get w- what you're getting after. There is that um, you know if you think about things that. Um, if, if you put a platform together like an in-con- nice in contact is a company that we use regularly, um, and they work with a lot of the huge companies, you know, all over the world. Um, but one one interesting thing is that that listening to the conversations and with the ability to record everything and the data capacity to do that, um, they can start to tell if there's an influctuation in in the client's voice if they're getting agitated if they're voice is increasing, if they're starting to yell, if they're saying, you know, I don't understand you, you know, can you get someone that speaks English to me? You know, if you start to, to hear those things, uh, these platforms have the intelligence to, to offer a barge in from the management and say, hey, you know, we're sorry you're having an issue, you know, we'd like to resolve this, and they can hand it off to someone that's more compatible. And even taking that one step further where they can start to map customers' experiences or repeat business customers. So you think about someone that's bought something from a company, and when they call in the next time, uh, they have a trail of everything that they've purchased in the past so 60 days. So bought something days. from another company. Or no, from their existing company. So let's say they're but a repeat I mean, if buyer. You're, if, you're, if you're servicing multiple companies, you could tell if somebody is calling in that they've had problems with on Uber, 
or you know, on, on yeah. getting food, and now he's calling in about services, and you already have a profile. Right. It's already built into that and baked into that. So it's it's pretty awesome the the secret sauce behind it. I mean, it's been that, platforms that, have that been makes... developed for a long time, but it, they're they're experts at what they do. And again, a a niche laser focused company that's solving that problem in business. And just one problem. Right. And you represent hundreds of companies solving all different hundreds, types of hundreds. niches like this. Yeah, and I would say one of the most disruptive technologies that I see right now is SD WAN. And a lot of people know what that is. A lot I, of people I don't know what that is. So tell me. Well, okay, so you think of software to find wide area network. Okay. okay. Okay, so now here's a it's almost like you don't want to say it's an MPLS killer, multi packet layer protocol, um, a, a way to carve out uh, data path on the internet where it's a private network. That used to be the way that we, we would do things. Um, it still is. But now with SD-WAN, you could bring in an in inexpensive cable connection, inexpensive fiber plus or a, a, a multi-tenant unit type fiber product for a couple hundred bucks. And then what you do is you lay over an SD-WAN company like a Big Leaf or Cloudgenics or Talari. These are all companies that do uh, SD-WAN um, services. But the neat thing is, is you're bringing in a, a fiber connection, a cable connection. You're muxing that together in one connection. It's pinging each connection. They're arguing against each other, Comcast and CenturyLink, who has the better connection. So if you're even on a phone call and you can prioritize the packets, you can prioritize voices first. If you're on a phone call and Comcast is hard cut, it'll switch over to CenturyLink just immediately. You won't even know that you're, you're having a degraded service. So now you're talking about resiliency and redundancy, multiple mediums of broadband connectivity, all mucked together into one pipe that you can monitor, prioritize your packets, um, all the stuff that, that most IT professionals have been kept distanced by CenturyLink's portals and Comcast portals are now in one portal. And the good thing is you can hold those companies to their SLAs because now you can point the finger and say, hey, Comcast, we show your traffic here. You were hard down from this time to this time. Our SLA shows you're supposed to be five nines up, and you're not, so pay up. So, <laughs> you know, when I hear all these different um, things that in my day were, I'll say my day, I sound like an old guy, were, were physical well, guy. network things you had to put in. I had to <laughs> mm -hmm. put servers in to hold data. I had to put firewalls routers and, in. Yeah. I had to put firewalls in between everything. Right. And now it's like make-believe. Yeah. Let me just drag and drop a couple of these all into my cloud you ship environment. a box and, and they and they it's work. Pre-programmed. Yeah, absolutely. But you know, right now that's critical. Everything is critical. We were talking about you know the the reliability of the service is only so good. If if you don't have good voice quality, people are going to think you're talking on the brick phone of days of old. You know, the bag uh -huh. phone. So SD WAN allows you to bring in two inexpensive connections. Keep that connection always up, and then you can prioritize your voice so your voice never goes down, your video never goes down. And I would say the NCAA tournaments would be the lowest priority of your traffic, but that's not even a funny joke at this point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you know, the, I, I'm, I'm going back to this. It feels like make-believe to me. Yeah. Because now having, you know, knowing and, and working with security on on these cloud or you know cloud companies and everything, yeah. and the fact that it's it's almost non-existent in in the back end. Yeah. When and it's like now we're using all these different companies' products together in a make-believe environment so that they can all be redundant and and fail over from one to another. Right. Right. Um, and none of them are really able to be very secure. In it, because they're cloud in the back end. Right. And it's all shared resources with a hundred other people that have it. Right. Everybody shares the last mile and, and, and you know, it, interconnects it is, it just and everything. It all seems like, like make-believe. We're, right. We're, we're putting together a bunch of make-believe components to get a, a real business. It kind of reminds you of the Matrix. You know, you're like living in the computer kind of. It's it's odd that, you know, everything is so automated now. Uh -huh. Um there's always personal touch, and, and I think that's going to be the challenge moving forward with this virus is, is how can we maintain as a society, you know, the water cooler mentality where you get together and, and do that kind of thing and still, uh -huh. you know, have that personal relationship when everybody's working from home. And that's that's a good point. When we talk, started talking about that, the virus that's going on right now, Yep. we had to cancel things online because the quality was, I've never had quality that bad. Right. But right. what it is is everybody now is using it at the same time. Exactly. And these systems that are all virtual 
and you know five nines they're supposed to be, but right. they're never tested at full capacity. Right. And they don't even know what capacity is. It's just they've never experienced it. in. Yeah, they've never had to experience that. And so you see a lot of companies that, um, from a, a data center perspective, um, have a hy- hybrid infrastructure. Maybe they're just doing everything premise based. And now it's going to the cloud. How are they possibly going to manage that? You know, VPN tunnels with with that many clients and or that many customers or uh, I'm sorry, that many employees trying to log into the one company. Um, the the bottlenecks and and backhaul issues and latency and everything that's going to be associated with that um, is going to be problematic for a lot of companies. So I think we're going to go through a a challenging time here over the next couple of weeks to to a couple of months and. And uh, the great thing is, is that we have technology solutions that can solve those problems and uh, and stand them up pretty quick. Interesting. So, the the costing behind it now, um, when whenever you see all these these services, and it's good that there's multiple options because then you get competition between mm-hmm. them, kind of like the progressive. We're giving you the price of all our employee, uh, all our competitors' insurance, yep. so you get to pick which one. Yep. And Now we have to be competitive. Um, but at the same time, you run into like new things, and we were talking about this before, looking at some blockchain instances where sure. we want to put you know, newer technology out there, have an instance of it in shared resources and everything, and um, it's not economically feasible yet. Right, right. It's just not there yet. And, and as we've seen the race of bandwidth to zero, um, I think what's driving that is, is content. I think everybody wants to own that content, and that, that's in a, in a sense why they're giving it away. But also think about the, the fiber capacity, you know, the strands that, I don't know, the 96 mm-hmm. strands can carry X amount of, you know, whatever. It's, it's almost unlimited bandwidth. And um, there's ample fiber. You know, now they're doing fiber to the towers and then 5G from there. Um, but, but I think it's the content that's king, and that's what's driving the cost down of bandwidth. But we're starting to see it in other things, too. And I think that's a, a, a function of competition in the market is that other companies can be born in the cloud. They don't have to have the brick and mortar and all the infrastructure to, to stand up a normal company like days of past. Now they can do it quicker, faster, better, cheaper. So um, when you say content is king, you mean companies that are saying we can cut our prices down to almost zero to get people on because then we can use their data for other marketing I think so. I think that's what I would consider content. Absolutely. Interesting. So do you think at some point um, that that goes away, whether it's GDPR, it says you're not allowed to. Right. Or, you know, know, consumer has to have the right to opt in and boom, they're opting out. Right. Enough numbers that that business model goes away. Right. Um, I see that. Yeah, absolutely. At, at that and, and even in some of the things that we're looking on with blockchain mm-hmm. is it's so that that can, that right can be enforced technology wise right when it is does does that that model change does the, it crash and burn or or you, do you know now have to reprice out the, the the features because they have to stand alone pricing instead of we're getting your data for free that's how we're making right. money on it yeah or getting it for someone else and then it's all of a sudden the the tables are turned you know then then how does that um, uh, broadband provider compete in that in that mm-hmm. realm. Uh, so a lot of a lot of different things that the the unknown. But um, but it seems to me like like everything is kind of um, you know you hear the, the the saying that the only constant is change, and the change is increasing faster than we have ever seen before, and that's never been more true in the IT world. And so I kind of think we're in the wild west kind of you know we're we're sorting these things out and we're. We're trying to find our way and carve out, you know, niches that uh, can make us money and and still stay on the cutting edge. Because the last thing you want to do is is get going down one road of a beta videotape and they change it to VHS. You know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, and it, this is good to know. I mean, I have had several conversations with you before. Yeah. But not this deep into what it is that that um, you're solving, and you're really giving that picture of how we can get you the best product for the right piece. Right. And in this new cloud, virtualized, everything's a commodity yeah. environment. Well, and I would say that we're in the age of the trusted advisor, the golden age of the trusted advisor, and, and that's what we are. And so, um, you know, it used to be a lot of competition with the CenturyLinks, AT&Ts, Verizons. They had direct reps, and they still do. So I'm in an alternate channel where we're compensated a percent of the monthly recurring charge, and so we earn our company's business or our client's business in perpetuity because if they 
quit paying the bills and say we don't want to work with Telexicom anymore, then our income stops. So you have a direct sales rep. All they can sell is CenturyLink. They don't have anything else in their bag of tricks, and so CenturyLink is the best thing since sliced bread, and they're, they're going to sell that to you. Yeah. And so now we can bring you multiple hammer, options. Everything looks like a nail, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the only tool you have you Right. Can start beating stuff, right? Yeah, so you make it up, and you know, I'm not saying that they're doing that, but they do get in, involved in a lot of different things, just like the data center. They, they had 200 data centers a few years ago, and then they sold that off and spun it to uh, Sixterra, which is a complete standalone data center company now. Interesting. But but I do think that the, the direct sales reps are, are kind of a days gone by because they're biased in their opinions and they don't have anything to offer you. And, and, That's it. and the other part of that is that their company doesn't focuses on offering the sur- the solution, not being a sales company. Selling so, a product, selling right? Selling a product. So they have to they're like 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 a, a small company doesn't want to do the managed services because they're busy doing what they're doing. Right. It's a commoditization in workforces as well that kind of makes them able to focus on what they do best right and right yeah so how would uh, people who who would uh, you say reach out to you and how would they get a hold of you um sure you can go to telexicom.com that's t-e-l-e-x-i-c-o-m.com and there's information there to contact us yep so you can reach out to us online on our website and um and that's the best place to, to reach me or linkedin you can find me there okay Okay, well, you heard it here, Telexicom. And if you want a trusted advisor on all this mess of different technology out there, uh, reach out to Jim here. You got it. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Chris. Yep, it's been great. Thank you for listening to New Cyber Frontier. Remember to follow or like our post and circulate each new show to your networks. We keep you informed, bring you the latest news, explore new trends, and find the hottest topics. With New Cyber Frontier, you don't have to be a computer or cybersecurity expert. Just get plugged in. We encourage you to get involved. Tell us what topics interest you and join our mailing lists. You can find us on the web at www. Dot newcyberfrontier.com. That's newcyberfrontier.com. Check out our previous interviews and please let us know if there are any topics that you would like to hear discussed. See you next time on New Cyber Frontier.